Hey guys, it is Spooky Noodles, and I am here with <sighs> Book Haul Part 1. I think that's what I'm going to do. This is going to be the first part of a book haul. Um, it's going to be a very small book haul. I apologize. It would have been a medium-sized book haul if I waited any longer, but I uh, cannot wait. And I just want to show you guys these books that I got today. Um, I have some more coming. Um... I want to say Wednesday or Thursday. I said in another video that I should be getting all my books that time, but my mom didn't tell me that she got um, some packages for me today. And they're under her name because I ordered them under her Amazon because, uh, excuse me, she has Prime and that means she gets two, free two day shipping. So even though these books said they were going to get here by Monday, which is a holiday, so it wasn't going to happen, um, they came today, which is really quick, because that's like one day shipping. So, <laughs> that's awesome. So, um, I'm just going to go with, go through the books that I have. Um, all of them, except for one, one is a little longer, and the print is small, oh my gosh. One is like... Um, 245 pages, and the other ones can't be, you know, 100 pages. So, so without further ado, let's get into the book, shall we? All right, guys. First book is Jedi Summer by John Bowden. This is just a really cool cover because it looks like a, a kid's notebook, and it takes place in uh, 1983. So. Um, I don't know where I heard, I think I heard this somewhere on Facebook. It might have been actually, no, you know what, I think I heard about this on a YouTube video. Well-bred Beard, I think, read it. I, I don't remember what he thought about it. All I heard was coming of age, and I went and bought it. So, <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, I'll read the back for you guys. It's uh, kind of a long one, so bear with me. Um... Let's see here. 1983, a boy and his little brother wander through a loosely stitched summer. A summer full of sun and surrealism. Lessons of loss and love, of growing up and figuring it out. Nestled in the mountains of Pennsylvania is a small town. It's not like the others. Things are strange. Their people die but hang around. Pets too. Everyone knows your name, and sometimes a thing as simple as a movie coming at the local theater is all it takes to keep you going. And um, then there's some things about uh, how he's, you know, he's taken notes from Bradbury and McCammon and how other things about him. I don't know. Um, this book clocks in at... Um, 78 pages um, So very quick read for me. I will get done with this very soon when I get around to it um, It's a novella for sure um, And I cannot wait to get to it. Um, it just sounds like a really fun story I don't know if I was to guess what it's about It's about these kids who pretend they're Jedi's and they meet a kid with actual magnetic power and is able to move things with his mind and I yeah that's what I would guess is it is about but I don't know just based on the cover it's hard to tell um it's a really interesting cover too so I like it all right next and now I know where I found out about this book I found out about this book from well-bred beard um he said it was a great book um, I think he gave it five stars, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but uh, he gave it a lot of stars. Like, it was either four or five. I'm pretty sure it was five, though. And that's In the Scrape by James Newman and Mark Steensland. Um, I got this for two reasons. One, I heard it was a coming-of-age story. Two, there's a deer on the cover. So how could I not get it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And this book clocks in at 94 pages. So I was wrong. I said 93 earlier, but, uh, or did I? I don't remember. But, uh, Mark Steensland and James Newman. I know who James Newman is because I have Midnight Rain by him. 
and that's also a coming of age story which I cannot wait to read. I don't know who had the idea and who wrote the story if that's how it went. I don't know if they co-horsed it and they both wrote it and took turns writing it or something. I don't know how this whole co-oping with co-op writing, I don't know how it goes. So I don't know if someone had the idea, told another writer about the idea, and then that writer just took off and wrote it, and then the other one just slapped his name on it, or if they both took turns writing it. I I'm not sure. And um, I heard that it just flows easily, like it was written by one guy, which has me wondering if it was written by one guy. Because I don't know who Mark Steenslin is, but James Newman, I know who he is. So maybe James Newman had the idea and Mark Steensland wrote it? I, I don't know. But let's read the back, shall we? Again. In the Scrape. Short book, novella. Oh, uh, I got a burp, sorry. Ugh, sorry. All right. Most kids dream about a new bike, a pair of top dollar sneakers endorsed by their favorite athlete, or that totally awesome video game everyone's raving about. But 13-year-old Jake and his little brother Matthew wants nothing more than to escape their abusive father. As soon as possible, they plan to run away to California, where they will reunite with their mother and live happily ever after. It won't be easy, though. After a scuffle with the local bully puts Jake's arch nemesis in the hospital, Sheriff Theresa McLellan, McLellan starts, starts, starts. I can't not talk today. Starts, where did I leave off? Um, starts poking her nose into the fear, their feud. During a trip to their family cabin for the opening weekend of deer hunting season, Jake and Matthew kick their plan into action, leaving Dad tied to a chair as they flee into the night. Meanwhile, the bully and his father have their own plans for revenge and the events to follow will forever change the lives of everyone involved. I probably should not have read that synopsis because it's a 94 page book, so they just basically explained the whole book, didn't they? I don't know what I'm gonna read. Like, what is there to read now? I know that the dad gets tied up. I know that the, uh, boy has bullies and they put him in the hospital I mean this is a small book how are they gonna fit all that into a 94 page book and have more to it that's crazy guys I I'm very excited for this book um I'm probably gonna put this mm, probably in between Skullface boy and um Thomas Tryon's uh oh Chad Lutsky's Skullface boy and between uh, Thomas Tryon's uh the moon the Moon Knight bow or something like that. I forget what it's called. It's right there, but I can't reach it. Um, so I'm gonna sneak this one in. Quick read. Um, I'll, I'll judge it and uh, yeah, you will get a review of it. Um, I'm, I want to start reading novellas more because um, I found out that I like shorter reads. As much as I like long reads, I like shorter reads too. And uh, I thought before, I'm like, shorter reads are just, you know, you don't get a lot of information, you know, you don't really get much of a story with these small books, but I've been told otherwise, and I've read a novella called Hellbound Heart and Korean Road, and those both changed my minds about novellas. And then I read uh, Turtle Boy, The Turtle Boy. So now I'm all game for these type of books. Um, we'll read this one very soon. I'm gonna slip it. Uh, right after uh, Skullface Boy because you know I want to read Skullface Boy by uh, Chad Ludsky. Uh, it will be my first Ludsky book, so uh, I hear many people say good things about him. Only good things about him. Never heard anything bad about him. So, um, can't wait to read In the Scrape. Uh, this has nothing to do with Chad Ludsky. Uh, I can't wait to read this because of James Lumen and Mark Steensland. Um, <laughs> very interesting premise. Um, I want to see how they deal with deer season, deer hunting season, because I, ha in my book, I'm also writing about deer hunting. So I would like to know more about it. I know the rules in Michigan. Um, I know when the hunting starts and ends, but maybe there's like some slang, deer hunting slang that I'm not aware of. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading this. Um, 
Again, I got it because of the deer on the cover and that the fact that it's a coming of age story. I always buy, when I see a deer on a freaking cover, I buy it. Like Pine by Francine Toon and We Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. Bought them because I saw a deer on the cover. So yeah, that is in the scrape. Next is a really cool and probably really fun book. Um, I actually, fun story about this book. I attempted to um, write a story for this anthology and I epically failed. Um, I don't know if this is one that I actually sent a uh, story to. I don't think I did <laughs> because it was so what they were asking for was so weird and I never even heard of David Cronenberg before so um it's a literary tribute to David Cronenberg it's called New Flesh it says a literary tribute to David Cronenberg um uh I tried sending I tried writing a story but I, I'm just not that great with body horror like I'm not good at describing things yet so um I'm working on it though and I'm getting better I just what they were asking for was really tough and I just could not do it in the amount of time they were looking for. Um, but that's besides the point. I just thought it was funny that I wanted, I, I wanted to be a part of this book and now I'm excited to read it even though I totally didn't make it into this book. Um, like I said, this book is, um, this book is, 242 pages and then it gets into the afterword so um and it's um obviously it's not one story it's uh um it's oh it's also it's edited by sam richard and brandon vedito and it has a uh introduction by kathy koja the kathy koja so yeah and um i'm looking at it and i'm not really seeing any um, um, any authors I recognize, um, except for the two at the bottom, which are the editors. I'm looking forward because I want to write horror like this because I've seen The Fly by David Cronenberg and it's one of my favorite movies of all time. And I would love to write a horror story like that, where it's all just imagery and I'm scaring people with the imagery and making them grossed out. I would love that so much. So I'm looking forward to reading this one. I'm probably going to slip this one in when I need a break from coming of age stories. And I'm almost done with, with Within the Woods, so I might, sorry, I might need a break soon um, from coming of age. But yeah. Um, I didn't even read the back for you guys. Um, well, it's an anthology, so it's, it doesn't really give it you anything. Um, there's no authors that I really know, you know, that are any names that really pop out, you know. Um, the only one that looks familiar to me is Cody Goodfellow, and I don't know why that name rings a bell. Everyone else I've never heard of before. Um but I'm sure they're really good. Um, but yeah, I really want to see what their stories are like. As I'm growing with my reading, I'm growing with my writing. So every time I read a new book, I gain more knowledge of how to write. And since I'm really like overboarding, like overhauling in coming of age, that's why I'm so good at writing coming of age right now. Well, I wouldn't say so good at it. I would more say so that, uh, it's the one genre I know how to write. Um, <laughs> I recently tried to write a detective story and it didn't go so well because I have no idea how to write a detective story. I've never read a detective story. So I it totally flopped and I totally deleted the rough draft, what I had of it, and I started anew and I decided to make The Lullaby Man or just Lullaby Man. And uh, it's going good so far. Um, this is not a writing vlog, but uh, yeah, I've been writing uh, some some uh, some uh, words. <laughs> um, I've been writing a lot for that story, and it's coming along great. But what would make that story good is if I made a David 
Cronenberg-esque. You know, like, made it really creepy and stuff like that. Um, I'll read the back to you guys, um, just because it's probably an interesting back. So, let me read this so you guys get a... I, I mean, if I tell you it's a literary tribute to Cronenberg, um, you might know what it's probably about, but let me, um... Let me get into the back for you guys, the synopsis, I guess. Videodrome. Scanners. The Brood. Crash. The Fly. The films of David Cronenberg have haunted and inspired generations. His name has become synonymous with the body horror subgenre, and the term Cronenbergian has been used to describe the stark, grotesque, and elusive quality of his work. These 13 stories bring his themes and ideas into the present, throbbing with unnatural life. A yoga group brings transcendence and bodily transformation. A woman undergoing gender conf confirmation surgery is subjected to outlandish techniques. A young man discovers a reality warping potential of a bootleg horror VHS. A mother comes to terms with the monstrous appetites of her newborn child. Being terrified is just the beginning. Become one with us and take a deep, penetrating dive into the plasma pool. This is the new flesh. So that's the new flesh. By, uh, well, not by anyone. It's edited by Sam Richard and Brandon Vidito. Um, looking very forward. I think I, uh, if I heard it from anybody, which I think I found out about this on my own, but. I did watch a video by, um, excuse me, um, what is her name, um, or at least think of her channel name, Nick, um, her name's Alex, I think, and her channel is Hey There Thrifter or something like that, um, she's really awesome youtuber um she does uh ladies of our nightmare queens which is uh she d reads like women horror uh horror written by women and i like it a lot because i find women to be very horrific with their writing like um like it takes what people like about richard layman and amps it up by like a hundred so um yeah but uh, yeah, that's the new flesh. And here's the other stories I talked about. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is part one of the book haul. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Have a good day. Have a spooky night. And like I said before, and I always do this, I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye, guys. Now I am become death, the destroyer of